today on Rappler. And to be clear, the U.S. is committed to its alliances. And in the case of the Philippines, our oldest in the region, that commitment is, as President Obama has said, ironclad. The Philippines and U.S. annual war games begin. Vice President Judge Omar Binay wants to meet Indonesian President Jokowi to save Mary Jane. You just like, like to shoot the spirits here. Oh, let's go. <laughs> and how will Floyd Mayweather counter Manny Pacquiao's deadly left hand? Hello, I'm Natasha Gutierrez. This is Rappler's Rap for the Day, a list of the most important events around the world you shouldn't miss. The annual war games between the Philippines and the United States begin Monday. For 10 days, thousands of Filipino and American troops will engage in military exercises to boost their capacity to maintain peace and security. The number of participants double this year. U.S. Ambassador to the Philippines Philip Goldberg says Balikatan is something done by friends, partners and allies. We make no uh, pretense uh, that we are helping the Philippines as it builds a minimum credible defense and protects its maritime security. And to be clear, the U.S. is committed to its alliances. And in the case of the Philippines, our oldest in the region, that commitment is, as President Obama has said, ironclad. U.S. Balikatan Assistant Director Christopher Mahoney says the exercises will help strengthen ties between both nations in the face of emerging threats. We have a great opportunity over the next couple of weeks to develop and deepen the personal and professional relationships that have hallmarked the generation of Balikatan exercises. It shows what we stand for. What we don't stand for is aggression, coercion, or bullying. We stand for stability and peace. We stand together for strength. Military Chief General Gregorio Catapang says China's latest reclamation will likely cut off the Philippines' access to some areas in the disputed seas. Katapang says the biggest problem is the mischief or Panganiban Reef, adding the reclamation threatens all our areas. We feel ourselves in a very difficult situation because now they are reclaiming the mischief reef. So if they reclaim the mischief reef, uh, we will be cut off. We have a series of mischief reef is inside the country's 200 nautical miles exclusive economic zone based on the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea, which both Manila and Beijing signed. The Philippines is only 23 nautical miles from Ayungan Shoal, the site of a tense standoff between Manila and Beijing in March 2014. Katapang hopes there will be no confrontations between Chinese and Filipino troops. The, the Ayungan Shoal that we are claiming, and we are, we have, you know, there have there are soldiers there, and there, if this if this happens, they are very near each other. So I hope there will be no miscalculation or aggressiveness on both sides. Philippine Vice President Jajamar Binay says he wants to meet with Indonesian President Joko Widodo or Jokowi to save a Filipina on Indonesia's death row. Binay hopes to personally appeal to Jokowi to stop Mary Jane Veloso's pending execution. Binay adds he is sure Jokowi understands it is the responsibility of governments to come to the aid of their countrymen, especially in difficult circumstances. Veloso was arrested, tried, and sentenced to death in 2010 for attempting to smuggle 2.6 kilograms of heroin into Indonesia. In March, the Indonesian court rejected Veloso's appeal for a judicial review. Indonesia has some of the toughest anti-drugs laws in the world. Jokowi has repeatedly rejected appeals for clemency for drug traffickers on death row. Indonesian officials discuss the implications of a language test for expats at the World Economic Forum in Jakarta Monday. Coordinating Economy Minister Sefian Jalil says Indonesia will not implement a policy requiring expats to pass an Indonesian language exam before being issued a work permit. <laughs> you know, requiring a requirement or the, the, the discussion to require expatriates who want to work in Indonesia to 
uh, to understand bahasa. Actually, that is just the discourse. And that kind of policy will never be, never be implemented. For instance, last time we went to Japan, and a lot of investors from Japan uh, who invest in Indonesia complain that you know those uh, experts who come to Indonesia should have a, a university degree. You know. Uh, that kind of policy, actually, there's a foolish policy, and then president said, just right now, from now, we're going to abolish that kind of policy. So a lot of... Uh, the controversial plan was proposed by Manpower Minister Muhammad Hanif Dakiri in January, who says the exam will protect the Indonesian workforce ahead of the upcoming ASEAN integration. A confident Floyd Mayweather Jr. reveals his new punch to deal with Manny Pacquiao's southpaw stance. In episode one of Showtime's miniseries Inside Pacquiao vs. Mayweather, Mayweather shows how to throw a spear jab against a punching bag, which aims to force an orthodox fighter out of position. If you're ready to use slide light and shoot a spear jab, that's what's called. <laughs> Get him out of position. We're talking about like over here. He also goes back to chopping wood to build physical strength. And old training tactic, he an, an old training tactic he used early in his career. Mayweather says, quote, he's a guy that will push me, and that's what I need, because he will bring the best out of Floyd Mayweather. In contrast, the HBO-produced documentary At Last is more Pacquiao-centric, focusing more on the rise of Pacquiao from his humble beginnings to being one of the biggest stars of boxing. For those on desktop, click on the links on your screen. You can also click on the tabs below to go to story in the video. And for those on smartphones and tablets, the links can be found below the video. Rappler has a patented user engagement model that puts a mood meter on every story. Looking at the mood navigator, the story with the biggest circle is... Georgina Wilson dropped by talent manager Shirley Kwan. This has 74% 74, 74 of readers saying they don't care. Today, most people don't care. That's the wrap for today, Monday, April 20, 2015. Visit Rappler.com for the latest news here and around the world. Check out our other shows, SciTech for You and Rappler Talk. And if you haven't yet, subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm Natasha Gutierrez. As we say at Rappler, tomorrow begins today.